Most people have used our alarm display to show active historical or even log alarms. What I'd like to show you today is how we can extend the actions of that alarm display using a thing called the uh, cursor position status which is built into that alarm display. Here's an alarm display that is built into a sales demo program of ours. Typical alarm display, have the main area here columns for date, time, message, acknowledge, etc. And down here some buttons that affect that display. Uh, cursor on, cursor off allows a cursor to appear here. You can move that cursor up and down using these arrows. You can acknowledge, clear, etc. And then some other ones over here. So let's, uh, in this one we have a, a pop-up window configured so we can trigger some alarms. And like so. And now we have some alarms. What we can do now is show how we can either by um, using the cursor on and moving the cursor up and down, we can select an alarm and then we can acknowledge. Changes color and the acknowledge time comes in here. This one also has the ability, even without using the cursor, turn the cursor off, to have direct selection of the alarms so that if I simply touch the alarm it uh, highlights it as you can see here and this one also has a sub display attached to it, a pop-up window which can be a, a JPEG, can be a window screen, can be even a movie if you have a multimedia unit. But what if we want to highlight the fact that you know, I'm just about to acknowledge this high pressure alarm. Okay, How do I know that that's the one that I acknowledged later on? And maybe I want to do some other action. Maybe I want to store uh, or acknowledge that in the PLC. Selecting the, the alarm and then acknowledging it the acknowledge function works correctly but there's no external output from that that we could use to extend to other actions. Back in the other editor we can see the alarm window which is part of this group so I do a slow click, highlight it and then double click to open it. Uh, there's the sub display definitions in here but what I'm going to show you is this feature here. It says cursor shape so it's not obvious that you have to go here to do this and of course you can change the cursor shape from a line to a mirror image i.e. Uh, it reverses. But this one here cursor position storage address so I'm going to set to user 9999 and check this box. The idea is that as we move up and down this alarm part we can store the currently active position within the window and then we could use that to do some other stuff so let's uh, see how that's going to work. Uh, to demonstrate this I'm going to just put a simple numeric display on here and I'm going to set it to user 999. So that's just going to display this newly entered cursor information there. So let's run that back in simulation and see what it does. Then trigger some alarms. So far this cursor is set to zero. I'm going to turn on the cursor 
And notice immediately that it comes to 5, 3, and 1. Or 1, 3, and 5. That's the order in which we put them in. 1, 3, and 5. And there's another one above it, which is 10,001. So what, what do those numbers actually mean? If we have a look in the editor, let's go and examine the alarm settings. And in here, we're working on a block 3 alarm, as it happens. And you can see that um, alarms 1, 3, and 5 are the three that we had open in our alarm window. Let's just check again. High pressure alarm, shut off valve fa failure, and pressure valve open. And there they are. So what this means is that cursor is showing us the alarm number, the order in this list of the alarm that was active, or the cursor is active on. What about the 10,001? Well, these are all the bits associated with block 3 alarms. These are word alarms, and number 1 is tank 1 level critical. And there it is. So the cursor position is the number in the list, and then with an added 10,000 for word alarms versus regular alarms. Back in the editor, uh, what we can show is that with this information, this new cursor information, we could extend things like the acknowledge button. We could uh, we have an acknowledge button, it's a special switch, um, but we could add, for example, a bit switch, a momentary bit switch, and we could make it uh, do a run run of a script. So I'm just going to create a variable that could be used to trigger a script. And I want that to occur before the acknowledge, so I'm going to push that to the top of the list. Now I can also add for example, a word switch and make it an add. I'll show you why in a minute. And we're going to add ACK alarm. So I'm going to create a new variable called ACK alarm. Register it as a variable. Now I'm going to again move that further up in the queue so that it's there. So they are. Uh, ACK alarm equals user 999 plus 1. Well, I can use this, if I just add 0, it has the same effect as just a move. So now I'm saying uh, the cursor position plus 0 goes into ACK alarm. But let's say I wanted to uh, create an offset. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, I wanted to actually start at 100. I could do that, and that would... Uh, that would make that happen. But for now let's keep it simple, add zero, and we're all done. Okay, so now we can, by using the cursor address in the ACK alarm, um, in, we might actually call this something like uh, last ACK alarm, and that would make it a bit clearer. So now the last acknowledged alarm is this cursor position plus some offset if we choose to do so. So no need to run that, they're not really going to do anything, but I think you get the idea that uh, we stand, started with a, uh, an, uh, an alarm display, we could use all the standard functions on it, and now we can extend that functionality to trigger scripts, to save uh, the uh, position we're on, or we want to, we may, may want to invent some other alarm feature, such as when I highlight this alarm, um, show me something else, do something else. And this little uh, cursor position really is a, an enabler for a lot of those extra features. So have fun with that. I hope you find it useful.